Hi everyone, GMGM. Hope you're all having a good day. Um, welcome to another session of the ICP Zero to DAP Educate series. Um, today we are um, joined by Moritz again. I don't know if you guys remember him from the first session, um, who will be sharing and kind of diving deeper into some useful resources. Hi Moritz, how are you? Hi there. How is everyone? All good. How is everyone? We're fine in the chat. Um, love to hear how everyone is and um, if you're excited for the session today. GM. <laughs> Seems like I can only share one window. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to, to start. Go for it. Okay, awesome. Uh, so as you already heard, my name is Moritz. Um, I've been active in the Definity community for more than five years now, and I've been building dApps on the IC since the mainnet launch, so in May 2021, more than two years already, I think, almost three. And I joined Definity last year as a developer relations engineer. And um, as part of that role, I am uh, handling the grants program, um, I am creating educational material, I'm trying to improve the developer experience, so if there's anything that annoys you, please reach out and let me know. And I'm one of the go-to persons in the ecosystem for developers that run into problems. And today I'm sharing helpful resources for you to get started in your developer journey on the IC. And again, just as my first presentation and probably all the other presentations for the sake of time, I won't be able to explain everything in detail because there's really a lot to unpack. So if there's something you'd like to know more about, uh, keep an eye open for the QR codes on the slides. And today there will be many QR codes, like a lot of QR codes. Basically every slide is just a, a yeah, collection of QR codes. So um, the presentation is public and I will share the QR code at the end. So you don't have to constantly like keep your phone out trying to scan all of those QR codes, just so that you know. All right, let's start off by talking about agents. So agents are needed to communicate with canisters running on the IC from different host environments. So you would use an agent, for example, when you are building a website that communicates with a canister, uh, or you're maybe building a backend in Rust that communicates with a canister. So those agents are really similar to, for example, Ethers.js or Web3.js from the Ethereum ecosystem. And the agents have a couple of tasks, and those are, for example, structuring data, encoding um, requests and decoding responses, and they are also responsible for managing authentication. And the most prominent ones are listed here. So the JavaScript and the Rust agent are maintained by Definity, and the rest, for example, this Python agent here are community maintained or community developed. And in the top right corner, there's a QR code. Um, so there are many more agents actually. Um, so check out the QR code if you are missing an agent for your specific language. And if you don't find it in that list, um, please feel free to apply for a grant to build that agent because that's something that we are really interested in to have like a lot of agents out there to be able to communicate with the internet computer or with canisters deployed on the internet computer. The next thing you are probably going to be interested in are CDKs. So a CDK is a canister development kit. And that is an adapter that, it, that is used by the IC SDK, so software development kit, that provides a programming language with the features necessary to create and manage canisters. Um, as we already heard in a couple of the talks, in theory, every language that can be compiled to WASM or has an interpreter written in a language that can be compiled to WASM can have a CDK to build canisters for the internet computer. And the IC SDK, ships with um, Motoko and Rust CDKs, and those are both maintained by Definity. Um, notable other community CDKs are the Kybra CDK for Python and the Azel CDK for JavaScript, which are both built by a community member called Demergent Labs or a team called Demergent Labs. And we, then we also have the Bitfinity network. It doesn't really fit in here, but I still want to mention it for the sake of completeness and add a little bit uh, more nuance to it um, later on. And again, those um, are the only... 
Stuart, yes. sorry to interrupt. I the slides don't think that uh, they're working. They're not moving. Yeah, then then it doesn't work to share this entire. Is it now working? Yeah. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. Then, then you will have to deal with my um, bookmarks bar. Or oh, yeah, maybe you don't. <laughs> I don't um, think it's too bad. Yeah. Let me just move this here. You can still see it right now, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Then I keep it like this. You didn't miss that much. Actually, it was just a slide um, like this <laughs> with a couple of logos on it. And this is the current slide. Um, so yeah, I think I don't have to repeat everything. Um, okay. Where were we? Um, yeah, there are more, there are more CDKs. So you can uh, check the link in the upper right corner to see if there's maybe another language that you use. Um, that allows you to build canisters for the IC or has a CDK available. Okay, let's start with Motoko, the, the language Motoko. So Motoko was specifically designed by Definity to support the unique features of the internet computer and also to provide a familiar yet robust programming environment. And it's pretty similar to Swift and JavaScript in terms of syntax, so it should be easy to pick up for a majority of the people. And on this slide, there are a couple of helpful resources to get you started. And the first one is a in-person Motoko bootcamp that helps you to learn and also to understand and code Motoko. Um, I say in-person, but the lectures are actually recorded and all the material for the lectures or for the bootcamp in general are available online. So you can go through them asynchronously as well. Another very nice resource to learn Motoko is the interactive Motoko tutorial that has been developed by one of our grantees called Agor app. And that basically, I, I hope you, you see this now, let me check. Yes, okay, great. And this is basically, if you ever learned Svelte or if you know Svelte, this might look very familiar to you. <clears throat> so on the left-hand side, you always have like a theoretical concept and um, some text that you read through with um, a challenge in the end, basically a programming challenge. So for example, here, this little exercise asks you to print out um, the string, basically uh, consuming the numbers array up here. Um, so what you do is basically you, you code in here. This is a full-fledged IDE. It's basically VS code running in a browser. So you, if you have like a syntax error, you get like those nice squiggly lines telling you that there's something wrong. And there's also formatting in here. Um, so yeah, pretty nice. And in the end, you can just execute this and check um, whether the output matches the um, solution um, or the intended output. And you can check whether your code matches the uh, proposed solution. So that's a, a pretty nice way to basically um, interactively learn Motoko and go through the different data types. Um, control, um, flows, um, records, objects, and so on and so on. So I, I really like it. I think it's a, a great place to get started uh, to become familiar with the language. Then we also have um, this intro here in our documentation. Um, so yeah, like the, like, like the name says, it's basically an intro on building canisters in Motoko. So you learn a little bit about the fundamental, uh, fundamentals and also about some things that you commonly have to do, like upgrading a canister or making an inter-canister call on Motoko. So um, this is if you hit docs.internetcomputer.org and then, then you go to guides, you go to uh, building backend canisters and then building canisters with Motoko. The next resource is um, again, the documentation because Motoko actually has its own top level header entry in our documentation. So it's really a first class citizen uh, in terms of building canisters on the IC. So this one is more aimed to the language itself, I would say, and language concepts, not so uh, practical in general, but also a really, really nice resource um, to check out. And actually this uh, interactive uh, Motoko tutorial that I just mentioned is also embedded in the documentation. So you can just uh, walk through it um, on docs.internetcomputer.org. Um, then we also have the Motoko book, which is like a book for the Motoko programming language. If you read the Rust book or if you know the Rust book, this is pretty, pretty, pretty similar. So you can read it from uh, the beginning to the end and you should have like a really good understanding about the concepts of the language and also about building canisters in Motoko in general. 
Uh, but you can also use it as a resource if you are like not really sure how something works. You can try to search up here and look for, I don't know, records or upgrading canisters or something like that. And then there should be um, a topic covering uh, or a chapter covering the topic. Um, then we have also Motoku, which is basically uh, one of those awesome repositories. Here you have a lot of uh, content um, regarding Motoko, so applications that have been built for Motoko divided by different um, um, sections or, um, yeah, I don't know the name in English right now, but you, you, you get it, I guess. Uh, different development tools that you can use if you build canisters in Motoko also for testing. And then a number of useful libraries um, if you're a developer in Motoko. Of course, you don't want to write everything from scratch. So, for example, if you need, like, uh, I don't know, CRC, um, there is a package or a library uh, written in Motoko that gives you this functionality. So it's a, a good place to explore what's out there and also a good place to get like an idea of what other people are maybe building, for example, games or social applications, uh, stuff like that. Um, I would definitely bookmark that in you, uh, if I were you. Then the Motoko Playground. This has the same um, IDE feature, let's say, than this... Um, interactive Motoko tutorial has. So again, it's like a full-fledged editor running in a browser that gives you those squiggly lines and has um, um, yeah, auto formatting and stuff like that. And the cool thing here is that you actually can deploy the canisters that you write in here um, by just clicking on deploy without having to have a wallet with cycles in it. So this basically pays the costs for you. Um, but there's a caveat, and that is that the canisters only live for 20 minutes if you deploy them like this. So it's not permanent, it's just like for ideating, for, for hacking something together. And it's also pretty great to um, share code that you write because you can just click on this save and share button up here, and then it will store your code in the canister and provide a link that you can send to other people to access your code. And then you're basically both on the on the same page. So it's a nice way to... Uh, build like a, um, a minimum um, example for like a bug or something or for a feature that you're exploring. Um, so yeah, I really liked it. And after you deploy the canister, you actually have a way to interact with the canister through Candid UI. So I can say, say, um, hello world, all time classic, call it and I get the immediate response here. So this is actually making a call to this canister that has been deployed um, on the mainnet. So a pretty neat tool to, to hack something together. Then we have MOPS, which is a um, yeah package registry and also a package manager for Motoko packages or libraries. Um, so it has a nice search bar. So for example, if you were to search for SHA, you see libraries that um, implement that. Um, it gives you the readme from the GitHub repository. If there were some Motoko docs written, you can see them here a version history, dependencies, what it's dependent on, uh, tests that have been run, if they were successful, and so on and so on. So MOPS is basically like uh, NPM or Cargo for uh, JavaScript or Rust, respectively. So again, a very nice tool to not uh, having to write every single functionality by yourself. And I think most of you are used to having a package manager um, from their programming language of choice. And that's basically the same thing, but for Motoko. Um, and then we have the developer journey. This is uh, a pretty new thing that basically walks you um, through becoming uh, a developer on the IC from starting with no knowledge to being like kind of like a, I would say intermediate, um, yeah, intermediate de developer on the on the internet computer. So we have six uh, different sections here starting at pre-flight and then ending up at their internet computer astronaut. And in between there also uh, not only lessons about the internet computer in general and concepts about the internet computer, but also about coding and understanding Motoko. And this actually also exists in video form. So if you head over to the YouTube channel, you will find um, a number of developer um, journey videos here. I don't think we have all of them as, we, uh, as videos yet, but I think the first three are, are, are available and four, five, and six, uh, sorry. The first three, yeah, the first three here are available, and three, four, and five are uh, currently being produced. So, also a very nice um, thing to check out to to get started building on the internet computer in in Motoko. So, let me close some of those.
perhaps. All right, so that's um, that's it for Motoko. Let's continue with Rust. So Rust is a systems programming language that aims to provide memory safety, concurrency, and performance. And the cool thing about Rust is that it actually compiles to WASM. So it's a very good fit for the internet computer as canisters are actually just WASM modules, as you've probably already heard in one of the prior uh, sessions. And here again, we have the Rust documentation that gives you a, a good overview of how to deploy a canister written in Rust to the IC. So this is, <coughs> sorry, I'm a, a bit sick. This is um, in the same place where this building canisters with Motoko uh, is located it. And again, you learn how to make into canister calls, set up a project, um, and then like some, yeah, examples, like how to use stable structures and stuff like that. So this is basically the starting point for uh, building canisters in Rust on the, on the IC. Then we have um, two videos here, one from uh, Encode actually, and the other one from another hackathon that we hosted. And here we have two engineers, <laughs> two Rust engineers um, explaining how to start building canisters in Rust on the IC because it's a, a bit different. There are some things you have to be aware of. So if you pick Rust, definitely uh, watch those tools, uh, those two videos. Then we also have two online courses from uh, Ryzen and from Decade. They are aimed at uh, getting people started building Rust canisters. So also very nice way to, to get your hands dirty in a bit more of a, a interactive way. <clears throat> And then we have this uh, blog post, uh, effective Rust canisters by uh, one of our Rust engineers or developers. And also this video about be best practices um, when building canisters in Rust on the IC. And those are also very important resources. So before you start out, I would definitely recommend you to watch or read those two um, because yeah, they will help clear a lot of things up and maybe avoid um, Run, avoid you running into some pitfalls maybe when building canisters in Rust. Sorry. Um, next up, ASL. So the next CDK, um, yeah, is ASL. And ASL allows you to build canisters in JavaScript or, or TypeScript, uh, TypeScript, respectively. And ASL also has a book similar to the Rust book or the Motoko book that covers um, a lot of the ground. So I would say this is a really good resource. I'm, I'm really impressed actually by the Merchant Lab that they that they have this book available, even though the um, ASL CDK is pretty young. So I think it's it's great that they put developer experience first because this is like a, a great resource when, when you are a developer to look into, to search for things and also just to get like an understanding of how to build canisters on the IC. So I think you could get away with just reading this if you're just interested in building um, canisters and TypeScript on the internet computer because it gives you an intro um, on the IC and uh, some of the yeah things you have to be aware of. But still, um, I would recommend you to watch those other things. Just wanted to highlight the, the quality of this document. Um, here we also have a Decade course and another um, introductionary video from the team that is building this CDK. It's like an hour long video that walks you through how to use this and maybe also clears up some caveats or some questions that um, develops us that first users might have. So also very nice resources. And then there's also a TypeScript bootcamp, which is completely free. Um, I think this one is not in person um, and it's aimed more at developers that already have JavaScript or TypeScript experience. So um, yeah, make sure you, you learn some JavaScript or TypeScript first before you um, watch this or attend this. And here again, the material is available online and also the lectures have been recorded so you can go through this course asynchronously. And it's also a really good resource, I have to say. So definitely check that out if you already know TypeScript or JavaScript and you don't want to learn Motoko um, or Rust. And then the next one is Kybra. And for Kybra, as of right now, the only resource that I'm available of is the Kybra book. <clears throat> so it follows the same pattern as the ASL book. So it's a pretty nice resource if you want to build canisters in Python to help you get started and explain some of the concepts of yeah, building Python canisters with Kybra. All right. Then, like I said, Bitfinity Network, it's not really a CDK. It is actually an EVM, so an Ethereum virtual machine running inside a canister. 
And the cool thing about this is that you can use any existing Solidity smart contract on Ethereum or on any other AVM chain and just port it to the IC, basically just use the exact same code and deploy it inside this EVM canister on the IC. And that way, if you are a Solidity developer or you just want to fork maybe a project from the EVM space, put it on the IC, you don't have to rewrite all of it, right? You can just like use the Solidity code and deploy it inside this EVM canister. And the team is currently building a bridge to bridge from the Bitfinity EVM to the internet computer. So to allow smart contracts deployed in the EVM to talk to ca other canisters on the internet computer, right? And they are also building a bridge to allow those um, smart contracts within the EVM to talk to smart contracts deployed on the Ethereum mainnet. So that's a pretty cool project. And you can find a link to the documentation and also an intro video that was um, presented or given at the little Bitcoin hackathon uh, here on the slide. So also two very nice resources. Um, developer tooling. The first thing I want to mention here is Candid UI. So you've already seen Candid UI in the playground when I deployed this Hello World canister and on the right hand side there was this interface that allowed me to interact with um, the canister that I just deployed. And this is the same thing, but just as a standalone um, application, right? So you can provide a canister ID here. And if the canister exposes its interface, you can just like interact with the canister. And if the canister doesn't expose its interface, but it's still available maybe on GitHub or something, or the developer gave it to you, you can, uh, you can um, provide the interface file by uploading it here. And then what this does is it basically checks uh, the interface of the canister and then allows you to interact with that canister um, through a graphical user interface. So you don't have to use like DFX canister call, blah, 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 but you can just paste the canister ID and have like a yeah a graphical uh, user interface to like write text here and uh, yeah, provide some of the commands and call them. And there's also, or there are also those random buttons that allow you to um, call the methods with random values. Um, and as this is not proper, not a proper DIT, um, it returns null. Um, yeah, so that's a really nice resource. And also, <clears throat> if the canister that you are trying to call would set uh, Candid UI as an alternative origin, <clears throat> you would also be able to log in with your internet identity and have the same identity that you have um, on the service that you are trying to interact with, right? So that's also a nice way to give your users like a very low level um, way of calling or interacting with um, the canister through their internet identity. Um, yeah. All right. <clears throat> then we have the dashboard, which is uh, one of my favorite websites <laughs> in the ecosystem, actually, because it gives you an overview of really like almost everything that you might want to know. For example, how many blocks have been produced since Genesis? How many transactions do we have per second? How many cycles are burned every second? <clears throat> what is the total number of node machines? How many of them are actually part of a subnet? How many boundary nodes are there? And so on and so on. So there's really a lot of information, a lot of data that you can dig into. But it's not only that. <clears throat> you also have information about governance. So you can estimate your governance rewards. You can check how many neurons exist, what their average voting power is what was the voting participation in the past and so on and so on. So really like a ton of information that you can get out of this also about neurons on the IC. Uh, yeah, ICP transactions can be checked. All of the SNSs are incorporated in here. And then also um, stats about the Bitcoin direct integration or CKBTC. So pretty cool stuff. And here you also have the possibility to search for a canister ID. And if that canister ID you are, you're looking for exposes its interface, it basically acts um, just like the candid UI that I showed you previously. So here you have a way of calling the, the methods that are exposed by the canister through a UI. But here you cannot log in with internet identity, but still uh, it's a pretty neat way um, to interact with a canister. And you also see some more info, like for example, who are the controllers of the canisters? So who basically has the possibility to maybe upgrade or delete the canister <clears throat> and you see what 
subnet is kind of still part of and also the module hash in case you wanted to verify that a certain code is actually being executed or uh, run within the canister. So a very, very powerful tool. Um, if you have a couple of hours, maybe check each one of those tabs in the in the top and see yeah, what kind of information you can you can get out of it. <clears throat> then the next three tools, CycleOps, TipJar, and Canister Geek, kind of serve the same purpose. And that is that they allow you to manage the cycle balance of your canisters. So as you might already know, <clears throat> On the IC, we have the reverse gas model, right? So you, as a developer, pre-charge your canisters with gas or with cycles. So you, you have to make sure that they don't run out of cycles because um, after a while, uh, after the um, yeah, after a certain freezing threshold that you that you set. So you, you could set a freezing threshold, for example, to a year, and then the canister will not uh, process messages. Um, when it only has enough cycles left to persist its state for a year. And then you have one year to top it up. And if you don't top it up within this year, the canister will be uninstalled. And that's most of the cases not what you want. So this is why those tools exist that allow you to specify certain rules. For example, here for this canister, um, the canister is being topped up with 5 trillion cycles when the cycles balance of the canister is below 10 trillion cycles. So this is this uh, dash line that you see down here. And it also gives you an overview of the cycle burn rates uh, in the past, in this case, 21 days, for example. <clears throat> so yeah, those three tools basically all serve this purpose with Canister Geek also allowing you to um, get a bit more information. It's a bit more detailed and it also allows you to display logging messages from your canister if you integrate with their SDK. So definitely go check that out. Um, it's pretty cool. Then we have the IC inspector. The IC inspector is a Chrome plugin. And that means that you basically install it like, a, I don't know, one of the wallets up here or like any other Chrome browser plugin. And what it does is it decodes and encodes requests that you send to the um, internet computer or responses that you receive from the internet computer. <clears throat> if you imagine you're a developer and you are building a front end that interacts with a canister. So like the dashboard, for example, this is a front end that interacts with a canister because here I can basically make a call from this front end to the canister that I'm interested in interacting with. So here, for example, I can call the query method that is called dit to js. So let's just copy this dit file down here and paste it up here as a string. And then what you would expect is because it's a call that you, that you would be able to to see this call in your networks tab, right? Or at least I would expect to see it there. So now we make this call and we actually see, oh yeah, there's an entry, a query call. And now we, we look at it and we're like, oh, okay, what 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 was like the argument that was sent? In this case, this was the service string here, right? And what is the response that I, I received? But then you realize when you check the payload that it's like all gibberish, right? I mean, uh, some of it is readable, but there are other parts that are not really readable. And that is because the requests you send to the internet computer and the responses you receive from the internet computer <clears throat> are um, basically encoded in a, in a special format. And that format is not human readable, right? If I look at the um, preview of the response or the response in general, this is most, okay, in this case, because it's text, you can kind of like read it, but still there are some uh, characters where I wouldn't be able to understand what they mean. And this is where this IC inspector comes in because it basically allows you to decode and uh, yeah, decode those um, requests and responses to make them human readable. So if I open this tab here, the IC inspector tab, and I make the same call again, I should be able to, maybe it takes a little while, yeah, to see um, this call that I just made in a, in a human readable form. So I, now I know, okay, that the name of the method I called was did to JS. This was the canister that I called, it was a query call and so on and so on. And when I go in here, I can actually see even more details. So for example, the identity that I made a call with because I didn't sign in with any wallet. This is the anonymous identity, which looks like this. <clears throat> and I can actually see the payload and the response um, in a nice way. So a very, very helpful tool, especially if you build um, both front and, and back get on the internet computer and you want to debug or get like an understanding what's being sent out and so on and so on. Um, I, I, I use it every day. Basically, it's a great, great tool. And then you have more tools if you follow this link here um, on our 
um, website. So yeah, feel free to scroll through this and see if there's anything you, you're interested in or, or you would like to, to use. All right. <clears throat> Then helpful aggregations. Um, so we've already saw one awesome um, repository for Motoko, but there's another one for the internet computer in general. And that is very exhaustive. So there's really a lot of stuff in here. Um, so if you want to get an idea of what, what applications, what tooling um, exists in this ecosystem or who's building what, definitely go and check that out. Um, it's a really, really great resource and we try to keep it up to date. Um, and if you find something that's not in here, please create a PR and, and add to resource so that we have like a very, um, very cool single place that you can come to and look at to see what's, what's happening in the ecosystem. For example, here, wallets, <clears throat> a list of the um, wallets and authentication providers that exist in the, in the ecosystem. And a lot of the things that I mentioned here, or I would guess actually all of them are also part of this list. Um, I'm just like nit or like cherry picking the ones that I especially like or use the most often. But still, I would recommend you to look through. That's a pretty cool resource. Then we also have a hackathon cheat sheet. And that's a, yeah, a good place to um, get up to speed pretty quickly. If you are participating in hackathon and time is limited and you might not be able to dive into everything in a, in a lot of detail. This is a, a good um, collection of resources to get you off the ground as fast as possible. So definitely check it out. It's also a very cool aggregation. Then we have the internet computer for Ethereum developers. So you, if you come from Ethereum or another EVM ecosystem, definitely check that one out. It basically explains the differences or the similarities between building smart contracts on Ethereum and building canisters on the internet computer. So yeah, definitely worth a read if you already know the Ethereum ecosystem or EVM ecosystem, but are new to the IC. And then of course we have the examples repository. And here you can find a lot of code examples, for example, in Motoko, Rust, some native apps, <clears throat> um, also some Svelte and C stuff in here. So for example, if you were interested in how to integrate with the, or how to build a canister that integrates with the Bitcoin Dialog integration, you would find an example in here, or how to build an encrypted node step or how to build an NFT wallet. So there are a lot of um, medium big examples here. And it's also good to just look at what, because most of those are by Definity engineers and it's just a good, a good way to, um, get an idea of what are the best practices when building canisters in Rust or Motoko, because those guys basically know, um, know the game. So you could probably learn a thing or two, or you might probably see things where you say, oh, I didn't know this was possible. Cool. Um, so definitely also recommend you to, to look for, through those examples and yeah, maybe fork them if there's something where you say, oh yeah, this is goes in the direction that I want to, that I want to go into. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay, that's it for the aggregations. Then if you want to dive or dig even deeper, there are even more resources. Um, yeah, for example, the wiki you just saw um, for the, um, the internet computer for Ethereum developers. So we actually have our own wiki page. There's a lot of technical content in there. A lot of, yeah, maybe not, it's maybe not really needed when you're building on the IC. But if you really want to understand how something works in detail, um, it's definitely worth taking a look there and um, yeah, using the search bar if there's something, um, a particular topic that you're interested in. I don't know why the page load takes so long. Um, okay, now it's there. So uh, let's say Bitcoin. Um, I hope the search doesn't take the same amount of time, but it seems like it does. Okay, we move on to the next one. Then we have three um playlists on our youtube channel the first one is community conversations so as the name already says here definity is uh, having a conversation with the community about upcoming features and basically um yeah demoing them or presenting them or asking the community is this something that we should work on or just giving uh, like general knowledge to the community like for example here um, a session on security best practices there's also a lot of interesting stuff in here. So I would definitely recommend you to watch a couple of them that uh, spark your interest. You don't have to watch all of them, obviously. But if you have time, 
there's really a lot of very interesting uh, stuff in here. The next one is Academy Talk. This is basically um, a white paper in video format. Those were recorded before the mainnet launch in 2021. And here we have all the, the, the big researchers from Definity basically talking about their respective topic where they've been involved. For example, if you want to know about janky cryptography or if you're interested in the consensus or how the peer-to-peer -peer layer works and so on and so on, you will find very detailed and very academic content in here. So if that's what you like, definitely go check it out. As you can see, I've watched most of them um, and I think they're pretty interesting, but maybe not for a beginner. Um, and then the last one is the global R&D, which happens uh, once a month. Um, and here we have, again, Definity uh, engineers and teams presenting what they are working on or what, the, what they intend on working on or um, basically showcasing new features, new releases to the broader community. And we also have community uh, projects come in and demo their project and show um, the broader uh, internet computer um, ecosystem what they are working on. So yeah, I, I always enjoy them. I always participate and, and watch. It's always very interesting. And you can um, yeah ask questions. Then the white paper, if you like white papers, uh, the internet computer for geeks is uh, 45 pages of pure joy. So um, definitely dig in there if that's your your type of uh, information or way of, of getting your information. I think it's, I, yeah, I read it a while ago and back then I thought it's pretty lightweight. Um, also lightweight is maybe the wrong term, but it's, you don't get like um, a headache when, when reading it as a normal person. So I think that's a good sign. Maybe at this point we can go back to the search and see, yes, here we have, uh, for example, a couple of articles around the Bitcoin integration. Um, and as you can see, pretty long with some nice comics telling you how things work, some nice uh, scientific notation here. So yeah, great resource. Um, then our medium in general, it's a pretty nice resource. I would say it's a mix between like maybe more developer focusing content or, or um, content that um, targets a maybe like a scientific audience so sometimes we have articles that are like have like 40 50 minutes reading time but also for publishing um, partnerships like in this case for example so it's a it's a wide mix but uh, I, I always find it interesting oh, I, I always read the articles and find they're pretty pretty interesting so make sure you follow this medium. Then we have the interface specification, which is again, a pretty low level thing <clears throat> describing the external view of the internet computer. And as a developer, you might not really need this, but again, if you want to understand how things work in detail, um, or you're wondering about a couple of things, this is the, the right place um, to look into. It's pretty long, but it also contains a lot of very interesting things. And then, I want to highlight again just the documentation uh, that we have. So there's really a lot of stuff in the documentation here. So we have, as you can see, tutorials, guides, references like the interface specification that we just took a look at, um, some info about DFX, which is the SDK that Definity provides for the entire computer, and so on and so on. So yeah, definitely make sure you also use the search functionality if you are interested in something. It works pretty well, I would say. And we also have like an AI um, agent uh, embedded in the docs. And that basically allows you to, it's basically a, kind of like JetGPT trained on our documentation, on the forum, um, on the white paper, um, on our Discord questions channel and so on and so on. So you could maybe ask like how to deploy a canister with Motoko and then it should spit out the answer um, after a little while. Yes, let's continue with grants and bounties. So we have a $200 million grants program and we give out grants in 25, uh, 5K, 25K and 100K sizes. And the focus areas here are developer tooling, infrastructure, integrations and APIs, dApps in general and CDKs and agents. Then we have RFPs, which are requests for proposals and bounties. 
a request for a proposal is a call for a grant proposal dedicated to a specific topic. So the RFPs can be rather broadly scoped and the applicants are expected to outline their proposals in the grant application. And then we have bounties and bounties are asks with a well-defined acceptance criteria and also a price tag on them. And the last ones are requests for startups. And this is basically a list of ideas for startups on the Internet Computer Ecosystem. And here you can apply for a developer grant and we would be happy to support you with technical guidance, um, PR, as well as introductions to the community and to investors in the space. We also have two pages for a uh, hackathon or one page for, for upcoming hackathons and another page for upcoming events that you can check out if you're interested in either one of those. And last but not least, if you have questions or if you need help, I would definitely recommend you to join our community-led uh, Discord, where you will find a lot of peer programmers and other people using different CDKs building on the internet computer. And you also have a ask questions channel where you can ask yeah, questions where you would probably think that the answer to them is not like super long. Um, and then if there's a question that is a bit more complex or where you would expect a um, discussion taking place or the responses are very long or your uh, question is very long, I would rather use the developer forum for that. And developer forum is actually a very, very uh, good resource for knowledge on the internet computer because even though we have a lot of documentation, there are still some things that are not documented and the undocumented things are probably uh, in the developer forum as a question. So the search functionality there is pretty good. So if there's something where you can't find anything um, in the documentation or in other res resources that you've checked out, make sure that you give the developer forum a search and try and see if maybe there's uh, an answer to your question already. And then for other um, inquiries that you might need support for, um, we also have a support channel that you can reach out to if there's something else that you that you need help with. Um, let's see what the AI said so far. Yeah, looks about right. All right, cool. Um, oh, you can see, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, that's, that's it from my end. Um, now we have 15, 14 minutes left for questions. I will <coughs> um, check the, the chat first and then I will check the questions. Yeah, a lot of people mentioning that the slides are not working. Thank you for for telling me. I was a bit slow on that, so I apologize. <laughs> no worries. No one missed anything except for three programming language logos, so I think it's, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, maybe I should go back to the other slide so that you can actually scan the QR code in case you're interested in the slides. The Kate has ICP resources. Yes, they have um, Rust and TypeScript resources for building on the internet computer. And Martin should be happy right now. He asked for the link with the list of resources I'm sharing. And Matthias said, whoever says there are not enough resources to get up to speed in ICP is just crazy. Probably. Maybe not crazy, but yes, there are a lot of resources. I think maybe the issue is that people don't know where to start looking for them. Um, and that's why we have this presentation, right? Because um, when I started out, it wasn't that easy. We hadn't, we didn't have like this, uh, or we had the awesome ICP, but it wasn't that populated. But nowadays, I think we are doing a pretty good job at like, having those pages where we aggregate knowledge. And we're actually working on another initiative that we are going to, uh, we, we have it internal, internally already, but we are going to um, release it in, I think, late January or mid of January. And that is a, a website or like a sub page on the internetcomputer.org website where we list all of the educational resources that are out there. So we actually sat down and I, I looked through, I don't know, a lot of bookmarks that I accumulated over the years and other colleagues looked at a lot of bookmarks that they accumulated over the years. And we tried to basically find every single resource 
um, that has educational content. And that, that's not only like courses on Decade, but that's Medium articles, that's um, blog posts, um, YouTube videos. So really a lot of stuff. And we categorize everything into the topics that are being covered, the language that is being used, if it's up to date, what is the quality? Um, yeah, so I think like 20 different, um, yeah, um, yeah, 20 different things that we use to categorize the content. So uh, in late January, you should be able to uh, have this page available and then you can easily look for educational content uh, in whatever language you want to see it, whatever difficulty you might be interested in and in whatever type of content that you're looking for. Um, so I think this is going to be a pretty cool push. Um, okay, let's see. Questions. Is there any, Matthias asked, is there any cycles estimator tool based on a wasm you provide thinking about static analysis tool? Mm, that's a good question. I think not. Um, I mean, there are tools to estimate or to actually precisely understand the amount of cycles that a method call consumed but i don't think it is available as a um, tool that you can run on a wasm module so it's not like static um, let me see if i can find it mm. <clears throat> i have to think what the name is it was in the last uh, global r d actually that should be online maybe already uh let's see this is january no that's that's not what we want um uh, no it doesn't seem to be online yet probably still being cut so yeah to to summarize i don't think that's there um but we have this, for example, for Motoko to <coughs> counting a performance counter, that's the name, to count instructions. Um, so this is something that you can use and it's available because it's like uh, baked into the system. It's available for all languages, basically. So for Motoko, Rust, TypeScript, um, Python, whatever you want to use. And how, how you invoke it probably depends a bit on the on the um, language that you use to build Kinesis. And for Motoko, there's this experimental internet computer library. And I think this is the AS, I think. This is the um, library that you use if you want to know like how many instructions your call consume. But I'm not 100% sure, but I've think that's it. If you want to know, um, watch the latest R&D as soon as it's, as it's out there. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not 100% sure. Is request for startup an accelerator? Nope, it's not an accelerator. I can actually show it to you. Request for startup is a section within our grant dash request for startups repository. So it's a list of, yeah, basically ideas for startups on the IC. Some of them already exist. For example, some of you might heard that Bionic just launched yesterday or today, I think yesterday, um, but still, we still think this is a, a great idea and we still think it's good to have more than one of those. And some things, oops, don't exist. Um, so for example, here, cross-chain decentralized exchange, there doesn't seem to be an example of that here. Um, so no, it's not an accelerator. It's, like I said, we would be happy to support anyone trying to tackle this with a grant, but um, it's not an accelerator. <clears throat> then how can I connect front end and integrate AI in my DEP? And also how can I connect to real time data from off chain to use on chain on mainnet? So I think that's basically three questions. The first question is how can I connect front end and integrate AI, like integrating AI um, in your front end that probably depends on the AI provider, right? So I think uh, 
ChatGPT or OpenAI has a, an, an API that you would use where you would provide an interface for your user where they can enter their query. And then your website makes a call to the OpenAI API and you would display the response in your in your front end. Um, I guess that's the answer to, to one of the questions. And how you connect a front end with a canister is what I mentioned in um, the first slide. You basically have to use an agent. And if you build a front end, the agent that you are going to use is the um, agent JS, which is <clears throat> in this GitHub repository and the documentation is here. So yeah, if you want to know how to use it, um, there are probably examples in here. And if not, there are definitely examples in the examples repository that I showed earlier. And if you're interested in the documentation, how to use it, um, that's basically on agents-js.icp.xyz. Um, so that's how you would integrate with a canister from the front end. And then the other question, or the last part was, how can I connect to real-time data from off-chain to use on-chain on mainnet? Uh, this is where you would use HTTP out calls. And there actually was a session last week. Um, I don't know what the, what the, uh, oops. <coughs> what in code clubs, YouTube is okay. Makes sense. Um, so it should be in here. Oops, that's me. This one goes into, um, yeah, making calls to off-chain data providers and then using them within your canister. So um, that's the session from last week. Uh, it's on the MCO Club YouTube channel. So I would just watch that. I think that gives you the, the best idea of how to do that. Mm. Then Martin asked, um, for deploying DEPS on the internet computer, do you have any suggestion on which language to use? ASL, Motoko, Rust? Um, that's a question that gets asked a lot. I think in every session, someone asked this, this question. Um, so Motoko was built for the internet computer. So it kind of feels natural building canisters in Motoko. And I mainly build my canisters in Motoko, so I really like it. But if you already know JavaScript or Rust, then I don't see any reason why you should not use JavaScript or Rust to build your canister. <clears throat> there are some things, like I said, that you have to be aware of, uh, at least for Rust. I'm not, I haven't built a canister in ASL yet. Um, but yeah, in general, it depends on maybe what language you know, uh, what, what you want to achieve. Um, so, for example, Rust has a very big ecosystem of libraries that you can incorporate in your project. So if you want to do some, I don't know, complicated cryptographic stuff within your canister, the chances are that there is a create in Rust, but um, there probably is no uh, library for that in Motoko. So you might need to um, write that from scratch. And if you're not a cryptographer, uh, as we all know, don't build your own crypto. Uh, that might not be the, the best idea. Um, so I really like Motoko for small to medium scale projects. But I think if you really, or from what I've heard, uh, I haven't built a large scale canister application yet, but from what I've heard, um, it makes sense to use Rust if you really want, want to build something like really, really big with a lot of users and a lot of uh, cycles being, being burned. Um, so yeah. I guess it's always a trade off um, of what you want to achieve and also maybe what you know already. If you, if you have to get trained on Rust, that probably takes a while. But if you know uh, JavaScript or Swift already, Motoko is easy to pick up. And you could also, if you know JavaScript, just use the ASL um, CDK. What I can say is that for Motoko, there's a, a lot of uh, um, educational material out there. And for us, it's a bit more sparse and ASL is pretty new. So if you are a beginner and you know none of the languages, then I would probably pick Motoko and start out with that. 
And then later on, uh, once you are familiar with the IC and you want to build something really big, you can switch to Rust maybe. Um, yeah. And the last question was, hi, are there training materials available for educators? Um, not that I'm aware of. I'm not sure what exactly you mean by training materials for educators, but if that means if there's like co content where content creators can, uh, yeah. Um, I think from. he means um, for those who want to teach ICP and Toko to other students. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think you could reuse the uh, Motoko or the TypeScript bootcamp materials. Um, I think this is good to just like, also you go through it yourself, you understand it, and then it's a good resource that you could use with people that want to learn Motoko or ASL. Um, so I would probably use that if I if I wanted to teach a course on Motoko or ASL, I would use the the bootcamp content. I think that's a it's a good starting point. But there are actually also other um, initiatives that are driven by the ICP hubs, which are basically like on the ground communities that are spread around the world, and they are also constantly pushing out boot camps, hackathons. Um, and yeah, educational series and stuff like that. Um, so this might also be a, a pretty good resource to look into. Um, yeah. I think that might be all the questions. <coughs> um, guys, if you have any other questions, please pop them in the chat or in the questions tab now. Um, if not, um, then I think that might be it for today. Um, thank you so much, Moritz. Um, for answering all the questions and for delivering another great session. Um, like someone said in the chat, you always do an amazing job. So thank you for joining. Oh, um, so nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, and for everybody in everybody um, still watching with us, um, thank you guys for joining. Um, don't forget that you can still do both week one and week two homeworks. Even if you haven't started yet, it literally takes about five minutes. Trust me, I even gave it a try and I could do it. And if I can do it, <laughs> anyone can do it, trust me. Um, so um, give that a chance. If you complete all the homeworks, um, then you will be in the running to win some prizes. And it's just a really good practical, um, you know, practical experience to have and we are actually doing a hackathon very soon, an ICP hackathon, so you'll be well prepared to do something cool there. Um, yeah. Other than that, also, yeah. Just quickly, if you if you, if you want, if anyone wants to reach out, I'm just uh, quickly sharing my uh, Twitter handle in the in the chat. So if you have questions or something, maybe not about the um, the exercises, but about like Definity in general or the Internet Computer in general, feel free to to reach out. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, we are doing an ICP hackathon. Uh, <laughs> very exciting. Um, so that's why this Educate series is um, so great as well, because if you complete the weekly challenges, it's a really good starting point for that. Um, if the week two exercise isn't working, then you can always DM me. Um, I've send my handle you can dm me on discord i'd be happy to help um i know that the um, icp developer community on discord is also really really helpful and really good so you can always go there as well um other than that i think it's it from me if you can't find anything if you have issues with anything just reach out i'd be happy to help email discord whatever you prefer um, next week on Tuesday, we actually have some um, projects from the ecosystem, from the ice ecosystem, who are going to come on and like share their story um, with everyone. So that will be really, really cool. So make sure to join that as well. Um, same time, and you should all have calendar invites. If not, let me know and I'll help. Um, yeah, um, that's it for me. Do you have any final words, words? No, it was just a pleasure to be here as always. <laughs> and yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe see 
one or two of you in the upcoming hackathon and maybe judging your submissions. I think that would be awesome. And if you missed sessions before, I mean, I, I already showed you that they are recorded and available on the in Cold Club YouTube channel. So if you didn't have time to watch all of them, maybe it's a good thing to do over uh, the holidays in case you, you you take them or you have them to just maybe binge watch it and be like up to speed all things ICP and then you should be well prepared for the upcoming hackathon. Definitely. A great Christmas gift. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> also make sure you tell all of your family members uh, during dinner about ICP. It's a very interesting conversation topic. They would yeah. love to hear about it. Definitely. Okay. Um, thank you so much again, everyone, and see you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye, guys.